eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Atlas Ignition, two, one, and liftoff, liftoff, the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket with the fifth space-based infrared system satellite for the United States Space Force. Now 15 seconds into flight, PU's gone to closed loop control. Engine operating parameters continue to look good. You are hearing the voice of Patrick Moore providing launch vehicle asset data. Vehicle's now completing the pitch over program. Body rates look good. Seeing good chamber pressure on both SRBs. And RD-180 now beginning the throttle bucket. Engine response looks good. And now passing through Mach 1, Atlas V is now supersonic, and Max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Body rates continue to look good through the boost phase. Vehicle's now throttling back up slightly, engine response continues to look good. Chamber pressure on both SRBs continue to look good. Now passing 1 minute 10 seconds into flight, Atlas is now 10 miles in altitude, 4.5 miles downrange distance, traveling at 2,000 miles per hour. 1 minute 20 seconds into flight, standing by for SRB burnout shortly. Body rates continue to look good. Chamber pressure on the SRB is now tailing off. And we have burnout on both SRBs. Atlas will hold on to the SRBs for an additional 39 seconds before jettison. RD-180 is throttled back up to full thrust. Engine response looks good. Now passing 1 minute 50 seconds into flight. Body rates continue to look good throughout the boost phase. And the Atlas V now weighs one half of its liftoff weight. And standing by for SRB jettison shortly. And we have good indication of separation of both SRBs. Now just under two minutes remaining in the booster phase of flight. Vehicle's gone to closed loop steering, seeing a slight correction in the body rates. Now damping out nicely. RD 180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. RD 180 throttling down slightly now as expected. Two minutes, 40 seconds into flight. Atlas is now 39 miles in altitude, 68 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,400 miles per hour. And the Centaur reaction control system is now pressurizing the flight levels. System response looks good. Now coming up on three minutes into flight. RD-180 pump speeds and injector pressures continue to look good. Body rates continue to look good. Now about one minute remaining until booster engine cutoff. Pump speeds and injector pressures on the RD-180 continue to look good throughout the boost phase. Three minutes, 30 seconds into flight. Atlas is now 56 miles in altitude, 160 miles downrange distance, traveling at 9,000 miles per hour. And RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 5G acceleration limit. RD-180 responses look good. And Centaur has begun the boost phase chill down sequence. RD-180 now going to 4.6G throttle limiting, standing by for BECO. And we have BECO booster engine cutoff, standing by for stage set. And we have good indication of stage separation. We have pre-start on the RL-10, standing by for ignition. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Chamber pressure looks good. Body rates look good. And we have good indication of payload fairing jettison. This first burn of today's mission will last approximately 10 minutes, 30 seconds. RL-10 engine operating parameters look good. 
Body rates have damped out nicely from the startup transients. And the RCS system has begun the initial thruster firings for system thermal conditioning. Just over five minutes now remaining in, or five minutes now into flight. Our L10 chamber pressure looks good. Body rates continue. This is Atlet Mission Control at T plus five minutes, 20 seconds. Patrick Moore just confirmed successful completion of the early phase of today's flight, and all systems continue to operate nominally. The mission is currently in the first Centaur engine burn. Our next event, Centaur Manage and Cutoff, will occur in approximately 10 minutes. Lockheed Martin builds the Sivers satellites for the U.S. Space Force. Here's a video highlighting the power of these satellites.